All right, I'm here. I got Anthony from Red. How's it going today? Going great, man. Awesome, awesome. Winter Jam Tour Spectacular 2013. East Coast Tour is starting up uh, today, is that right? Yep, today's first day in Charleston, West Virginia. Wow. You guys, uh, you're not new to the Winter Jam Tour. Uh, you guys did the West Coast Tour, you did uh, the East Coast Tour a couple of years ago. Uh, what makes you guys keep coming back? They, uh, I guess they, they like us. They like where we are and where we stand with our music. You know, it's, it's, we're, we're the only rock band of its type on the tour this year. And, um, you know, I think what Winter Jam is all about is, is reaching people at different, you know, wherever they are. And I think there's a lot of kids out there that, um, that relate more to this music than they would to a, you know, to a Matthew West or a new song, you know. So, you know, here we are doing our thing and, and uh, you know, get a, catching the opportunity to meet those people where they're, you know, where they're at. Definitely. Um, one thing that I've always found interesting about about you guys with Red is that you guys really make an effort to really connect with your fans on every album and every song, especially until we have Faces and Faceless. And um, can you tell me a little bit about the the relationship you have with your fans and how much they influence what you do? Yeah, it's a it's a relationship because you know they're literally the only reason that you have the opportunity to do what you're doing you know the pulse of our career is dictated by exactly what you know the fans are getting out of what we're saying with our music so you know it's it's important each and every record so you know going to come born here um and very i think but under 30 days so you know we've got a brand new experience for, for fans of you know that and and for new fans you know we're trying to you know we always try to usher in a new a new crop of of listeners and uh, with that you have to evolve your sound just a little bit and, and, and I think that that was something that was really you know uh, a big factor for us going into making this record and um, you know it's just uh, you gotta definitely meet the fans where they are as far as what they like and, and um, but you know also draw that fine line between being an artist and writing music that, that is you know that um, you know most likely if it inspires you it's going to inspire most other people too so Definitely. Um, speaking of the new record, um, Release the Panics, coming out here uh, early next month. Um, February 5th, yeah. Yeah. I'm definitely pumped about this one. Um, until We Have Faces was uh, Until We Have Faces was a great album, um, how, and it was really successful, too. How, how have you, what was the experience doing this album like compared to some of the, the past three records? We actually lived at the studio, lived off the road for a while. We actually moved out to Los Angeles for a little while. Um, never had the opportunity to do that. You know, every other record we've done, with the exception of the first one, you always get a lifetime to write that first record. But uh, <laughs> the other ones after that, the other ones after that, you know, we were on the road full time, you know, touring. Because uh, you know the records were doing you know, done really well, and uh, you know we were so busy, we had to be out there touring and uh, doing our thing. So this this time around, we made the effort to change it up you know especially you know when you change things up when it comes to the writing process it seems to have a way of, of um, you know keeping things flowing creatively so we decided to come off the road and move out to Los Angeles where we were recording the record and live together and you know in an apartment and um, you know and write <laughs> till the sun came up and uh, record songs so awesome um, until we had faces had a, a little bit of a theme for fans and uh, the fan base with red what would you say um, if there was a overall summary or if you could just summarize release the panic in just a couple words or what it's about what would you say that would be it's the state of the world. That's, that's, I guess, in a couple words, I would say that this record is meeting us where we feel like the world is, and 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 uh, you know the panicked situation out there. You know, there's a lot of things happening out there that people just, you know, are are, are panicking about, and, and I think it's pretty evident in what you're seeing. You know, with anything from the, you know, the elections of who's, who our president is, you know, these school shootings, these, you know, the end of the world predictions. You know, it's just yeah. it's just chaos out there, and, and I think that you know as little as, as most of our backyards are, 
you know, a lot of us never get to leave that backyard, but, you know, as a, as a touring band, you get to see so many different things and experience in the world on a certain level that, um, you know, some people won't. So it's, I think it's our job as, as artists and music makers to, you know, to translate that world for those that, who don't really necessarily get to see it. And from what we see, there's, there's, there's definitely a need for music, and there's a need for music to, to um, I don't know, throw some ice-cold water on how hot things are right now. So. <laughs> Awesome. And uh, speaking of just all the panic and everything going on in the world, as a as a Christian man, especially you guys have played uh, quite a few shows in the mainstream with some mainstream artists. How how has your ministry changed over the years since you maybe since you started as a band, especially in the with the state of the world as it is? Um, what would you say your ministry is now? I would say I would I would say that the ministry hasn't changed hasn't really changed. It's just, and this is kind of weird to say, but it's kind of evolved. You know, evolved does mean change. But I think that our ministry remains the same as far as you know what we're here for. I think, but we've we've evolved the win way the way in which our ministry is 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 accept, or not necessarily. I guess accepted isn't even the right word. I would say that uh, that our ministry is, is received by anybody, and you know, being in the mainstream market, and I think this year is going to be a you know once, once again we're going to be very heavily involved in that. And uh, to us as a band, you know, we don't really like to draw that line. You know, here's the mainstream, here's the Christian market. You know, it's just it's music, the music world. It's it's it's, it's a realm that um, it's, it's a, you know just one of the one of those mediums of creativity um, that people. You know that they don't call themselves creators of, of, of music or paintings or whatever that we just involve ourselves in, and and um, you know this is just our chance to to use our art and, and our experience to to um, push people you know push people through to get them through to a you know at least have some sort of levity you know for the next four to five minutes or so of the record that they listen to. Yeah, and. Um being that that line between Christian and mainstream, it's really, it's almost like there's really not much of a line anymore. There's so many Christian artists um, performing in the mainstream industry now. There's almost no line. You've got you guys, Skillet, Toby Mac now, Thousand of a Crutch. It's it's really cool to see Christian bands in uh, in that light now and in that setting. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, yeah, it's definitely very, it's very, very cool. It's, it's cool how, you know, there are also different, there are different levels of being, you know, is, um, I guess in, engulfed and, you know, it's funny that the Christian market makes up literally 1% of the music market, 1%. And if you think of the 1% of the population of the United States, you know, that's not a lot. And <laughs> it's kind of crazy how, you know, there's just, you know, there's opportunities for us to, to, for everyone to hear this music. So, you know, there are certain bands that, we, that, that, um, that will, that just, you know, as mainstream don't have it, they just won't accept a Christian artist because it just doesn't seem to appeal to a, a broad audience. And I think that that's what, you know, music, music should appeal to a broad, broad audience, but, you know, as believers, you know, we also know that there's a, there's a time to be fed and a time to feed and, and there are bands that are very capable of, of feeding are just, you know, people that are Christian and and um, Red necessarily isn't there. I think Red is definitely in a, in a, in a place where we feed everybody and we don't care who it is and we don't care where we play. We don't care if it's a club, a bar, you know, a church. It doesn't matter. And, it's, you know, this music is for everyone and, and um, you know, we, put, we make sure people know that. We make sure people know that, you know, we're not these goody two-shoot guys that are just perfect and we don't. We don't have the perfect life. You know, we have. We, you know, we saying that we're Christians automatically tells people that we're weak and need help. You know, so awesome, awesome. So, what what can we expect from Red as far as uh, as far as the performance, the set, and everything uh, for this time around on Winter Jam? I eat four albums now. It's uh, it's, it's got to be getting kind of harder to pick the set list. Yeah, it's it's kind of crazy, but you know when you're in the you're kind of on the eve of releasing a new record, it's like, man, do we should we play the new stuff or should we should we play the stuff that people know? And I think you have to have a kind of a delicate mix of the two. But 
Uh, but it's always a question I love to answer because it's a question I don't love to answer. <laughs> so, uh, people say, what can we expect? It's like, well, if we told you what to expect, you wouldn't go see that movie. You wouldn't go see that movie at the theater if you, if you knew all. You know, so it's, I guess you'll just have to come to Winter Jam and check it out. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. You guys will be up here uh, up in Indianapolis, Fort Wayne area, January 20th. Definitely looking forward to seeing it. I think this will be the second or the third time, I think, that I've been able to catch you guys. So definitely, cool. definitely cool. looking forward to it. I uh, I got you guys at a Ignite Fest last in 2011 with Skillet and Striper and those guys and then uh, Winter Jam a couple years ago with Newsboys so I'm definitely cool. looking, definitely looking forward to this so cool. um, thank you very much for your time I really appreciate it alright thank you appreciate it alright we'll see you in a couple weeks alright take care see you